Church family, I am Evangelist Valerie Smalls, and I would like to welcome you to New Abundant Life Virtual Worship Services, where the shepherd of the house is none other than our own, Pastor G. Lydell Mungin, and the fragrance of the house is First Lady Michelle Mungin. Here are a few virtual worship protocols that will bless you while you participate in today's service. First, get up, get dressed. Grab your Bible, your electronic devices, a notebook, and a pad. And remember, don't multitask. Give God your undivided attention. By all means, sing along with the praise team, worship, speak back to the word, say amen, hallelujah. And if a sermon point blesses your life, make some comments. And remember, during intermission, say hello. Greet the people. And don't forget to follow us and like our Facebook page. Remember, send some hearts up and hit the share button. Come on, let's have church.
Hey, this is Pastor G. Lydell Munchen, and this is my faithful sidekick lady. Say hello, lady. Listen, I am absolutely ecstatic about Father's Day. I've devoted most of my life to raising my six children and caring for them and protecting and providing for them. And I want to say to every father out there, I know that being a good dad is not easy, but the favor of God, the grace of God is upon you to finish and accomplish the task that you have been assigned. God bless you. Happy Father's Day. Enjoy your day. Tell them to do more for you than they've done for those mothers because you, my brother, deserve it. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Come hang out with us on today, 10 a.m. for our men's day service. And then the recap on Facebook and YouTube at 6 p.m. It's going to be phenomenal. Bless you. Enjoy your day, Dad. See you later. God bless you is our prayer. Peace out.
Father, we glorify you and we honor you and we bless you for your goodness, for your kindness, for your mercy. We thank you for all that you're doing in this moment, in this season. We thank you because you are a never failing God. We bless you and we believe you by faith. Glory to God. And Father, I pray right now that you would speak through these lips of clay. That you would send the anointing that would make preaching and teaching easy and effective. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you because you always hear our prayer of faith. Pray you be the master teacher. Be glorified and honored in this house. We give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap them hands and give God a praise off of you. Hallelujah. Get your Bible and turn it into the book of St. Luke, chapter 18. St. Luke, chapter 18. Uh, I preached this uh, text before, praise God. And I just want to uh, give you just a little, uh, you know, they told me leftovers taste better the next day. Now y'all ain't talking. Amen. Praise God. So I want to give you a little leftover collard greens with a little smoked neck bone and pigtail in it. And uh, if you digest it and eat it real good, you're going to find out that it tastes good. Amen. St. Luke chapter 18, verse number 35 through verse number 43. And uh, I said sit down, but y'all standing so uh, you can stand for the reading of God's word. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Look what it says. And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he was blind, but he could hear real good. Hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. Verse 37, he cried. What did he do? He cried, saying, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him. The ones that went first before this man cried out, they rebuked the man. Uh, that he should hold his peace, but he cried so much the more. Thy son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What will thou that I should do unto thee? And you done cried, and folk done mess with you. Now what you want me to do? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith have saved thee. Now watch this. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, all the people, the ones that told him, no, you leave Jesus alone now. No, don't be calling on Jesus. You ain't nobody. You trying to call Jesus in mind. You know, stay in your place. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. Amen. Uh, if y'all help me on the day, I, I want to talk for about 20, 25 minutes from the subject, a call for deliverance. That's what I want to talk about, a call for deliverance. Hallelujah. Anybody need some deliverance in your life? I know I need it. You, amen. I need to I got some things in my life that I need God to deliver. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we thank God for all of uh, uh, the ministers and missionaries, all of the people of God. Come on, give God a praise for our visitors. Amen. God bless you all today. Understand one of the most uh, significant and life-altering events that can happen to anybody is that they have a personal and undeniable encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe it was the songwriter Bill Gaither that sat down and put pen to paper and began to write these famous words. And he said, I was shackled by a heavy burden beneath a load of guilt and shame. But then the hand of Jesus touched me and now my life is no longer the same. But then he said, he touched me. Y'all know the song. Oh, he touched me. And all the joy that flooded my 
my soul, something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. You got to understand when the Lord touch you, he makes everything whole in your life. The thing I love about God is that God will never leave you where he found you. Did you hear what I said? If God, amen, reveals himself to you, he will do something so miraculous and so significant in your life uh, until you will never forget that day. You may go back out in the world. You may leave God. You may turn your back on God, but you will never forget the real touch of God. I'm here to tell you, I was somewhere around 10 years old when I got my first touch from God, and I never forgot it. I never forgot the feeling. I never forgot the experience of, of a touch from God. Listen, I want to suggest to you that God is willing. I want to suggest to you that God is ready to touch you. I want to suggest to you that God is ready to do some undeniable things in your life. But here is the caveat. There's something that's missing in the puzzle and that is your willingness. You got to understand that God is a perfect gentleman. Y'all better get with me because I'm about halfway finished. And glory to God, if you really want God to do something in your life, you got to welcome him in to do it. God is not going to go against your will. He's not going to go against your desire. He's not going to, oh, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. We got this habit of singing songs like the Holy Ghost make you and God make you and God. No, God sits back and lets you do it your way until you get to the point that you can't handle it anymore. And then you lift your hands. But why go through all that heartache and hurt and burden and pain? Y'all ain't saying nothing here. When you can simply just lift your hands in the midst of the circumstance and ask God at the beginning to have your way in my life. I believe that there is nobody on this earth that have ever called on the name of God that he did not come to their rescue. For a matter of fact, when you look at Joel chapter 2 and verse number 32, it says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord that shall be delivered. I came to tell somebody, Jeremiah picked it up in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse number 3 says, if you call on me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not of. I just got a question. Are there any whosoever's in the house? I'm so glad that God does not relegate himself to the rich and the elite. I'm so glad that God is not the God of those that got a whole lot of stuff going on in their lives that make them look better than other people. I'm so glad that God is not for the eloquent and the well educated. I'm so glad that I serve the God. And if he got a rich way down, he'll reach way down and pick you up. I'm so glad that I serve the God. That regardless of what you did on yesterday, he'll come to your rescue today and give you grace and mercy to satisfy whatever your circumstance is. I just need somebody to clap your hands and thank God for being a whosoever. When you take a look at this text, and I'm going to try to unpack it, you find that there are eight key elements in this text that stick out concerning what happens to this blind man as he's carried and sat at the edge of the city. Number one, are y'all ready? I just need to know, are you ready? Is there anybody ready? Say, I'm ready, Pastor. Come on, anybody ready? Say, I'm ready. Pastor. Number one, when sustaining systems get disrupted. The first point, when sustaining systems get disrupted, the Bible declares that this man is carried every day and brought to the outskirts of the city. Understand that he has developed a system of getting his needs met based on desperation. Now y'all follow me for a minute. The, here is the key. Don't miss this evangelist Smalls. Amen. His system works because 
because uh, he's desperate. His system works, amen, because uh, he is a man of needs. So you got to understand that you got to be careful when you so needy until you'll do anything to get your needs met. Y'all didn't hear what I said. See, the devil want to make you think that God, amen, moves based on your needs. But God don't move based on your needs. God moves based on your faith. And so we have so many people in the church that's needy and they go before God crying. They go before God, amen, like the old folks used to say, knee bent and body bent in my head, bowed in the lap to my shoulder giving the humble thanks. No, honey, let me tell you something. You go before God. Amen. You don't just take your need before God. Amen. You go before God because God is a solution oriented God. You can go and rehearse your need and rehearse your need and rehearse your need and rehearse your need and God is saying when you get to the point that you are not so needy, I'll give you a solution because the just live by faith. It ain't got nothing to do. Amen. But your needs, I wish somebody help me. It has everything to do with your faith. I go before God saying, I know you got a plan. I know you're going to bring me fruit. I know I can't see it with my natural eyes, but I know it's already all right. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know if deliverance going to come from the east, the west, the north, or the south. But I just believe that deliverance is on the way. Well, I don't need everybody. I just need somebody to say, yeah, he won't deliver me. I ain't going before him crying for a matter of fact. God is speaking to somebody in this house today. And you need to decree and declare and let the devil know I cried my last tear. I ain't crying over this thing no more. I ain't begging you about this thing no more. It ain't Systems that are dysfunctional deliver me from dysfunctional mindsets. Deliver me, y'all. Some folk just dysfunctional. And here's the thing: when Jesus shows up, He's trying to shift your dysfunction to functionality. But some folk are so steep in their dysfunction until when Jesus shows up, Amen. They make a conscious choice to stay just like they are. Even though Jesus trying to get you to shift, hey, you ain't got to help me preach. I feel the Holy Ghost. Just look at somebody who came in your car with you and tell him he's trying to shift you. But he can't shift you if you're unwilling to change. He's trying to shift you. But he can't shift you, Dr. Thomas. If you say, I ain't going to believe. I don't care what the pastor said. I don't care what they say. I ain't going to believe. Why well, you just sit right there in your dysfunction? And move on, but we're telling you bye bye. Glory to God. Now, watch this. He starts his day off in a normal routine fashion. But in the process of the day, he hears something unusual. That brings me to point number two there's something in the sound. He is accustomed to the crowd. Amen. The usual passerbyers. Because when, amen, you lose one of your five senses, one of the other senses, Minister Simmons, becomes more sharpened. And he's lost his sight. But his hearing has become amplified. And this man is so in tune with the crowd until he's able to hear that there's something different happening in the crowd than the usual. So you gotta understand that some of y'all quiet folk, that when Jesus shows up, he shifts the atmosphere and the sound changes. Listen, listen, listen. There is a sound of deliverance. There is a sound of Pentecost. There is a sound. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. Amen. Even holiness 
just got a sound. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. That's why when folk get real quiet, what they're saying is I don't agree with the atmosphere that's being changed. You can say what you want. When you do, you're quiet. You disagree with the atmosphere that's being changed. You might not say it with your mouth. You might not. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. Y'all gonna help me on the day. But what you're saying is I don't agree with all that. I don't agree with all that singing, all that shouting, all that music, all that stuff. Y'all, there's only one place in the Bible where it says, Behold the Lord thy God. Let the whole world be silent before him. Everywhere else is a praising with the sound of the cymbal. Say praising with the cymbal. Praising with the psaltery. Praising with the harp. Praising with the clapping of the hand. Praising with the stomping of the feet. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Just take your right hand and put it in front of your mouth. And exhale. If you got breath, you ought to praise and if you can't praise him for the new car, if you can't praise him for the new house, you ought to praise him, you're still breathing. Is there anybody that says I'm still alive? And as long as I'm alive, I gotta praise. And I can't keep the last sale. Somebody release it right now. Come on, sing it. It's because we can't see the reality. 
reality of who we really got in our lives. Because every day is full of fresh grace. Every day is a fresh opportunity. Every day is another experience. Every day, y'all ain't saying nothing here. I don't need a million dollars to see how blessed I am. All I need to do is wake up and have a memory. But this man, when he cried out to God, he was the least 
likely for Jesus to show up for. And so the crowd said, don't call on Jesus. Hold your peace. But you got to understand that the opposition was proof that his opportunity had shown up. Tell God, thank you. And the devil is not your greatest hindrance. Come on, preach, black boy. Your greatest hindrance is your enemy. See, see, folk can talk about me all they want. All they're doing is giving me fuel. The church can resist me all you want. You're just giving me fuel. But when I start thinking bad about my own self, that's what I'm facing. The greatest opposition. So what you got to do? You got to encourage yourself. You got to say, self, you can take this. Be messing with you. Evangelist for Brian. But you can handle this. They're talking about you. Sister Shavana. But you can handle this. They're talking about you, lady. But I can handle this. How can you get to the next level if you can't handle the devils? Oh. 
folk. Get rid of burdensome folk. Get rid of your hindrances. For a matter of fact, it's time to lay aside every weight. There are some people you're connected to that it's time to divorce because all they do is speak negativity in your ears. But you need somebody that will tell you, yeah, you can make it. Yeah, you can be blessed. Yeah, you can have what God say you can have. And the man said, Lord, have mercy on me. Yes. 
responded to the man's cry. So that means you can't keep your mouth shut. You got to open your mouth. You got to open your mouth. situation in my life that I can't fix but I know he's able open your mouth and say hey to you I can say we are elated that you joined us today you've just heard the anointed word of God and now it's decision time someone listening today is in need of repentance the word has found you and convicted your heart of sin. And all God is looking for are these simple words. I am sorry, and Lord, with your strength, I won't ever do that again. There's someone that is in need of restoration. You used to have a solid relationship with God, but today the word has shown you that God wants to draw even closer to you. While there's someone else that is not sure about your relationship with God, he is drawing you today into a deep relationship with him. Whatever it is that you are in need of, you can pray the simple prayer with me. Father, forgive me of my sins. I accept total and complete forgiveness, and I now confess you as my Lord and Savior over my life. In Jesus' name. If you've prayed that prayer with us, we want to hear from you and encourage your faith. There is an email that will pop up on your screen. Email us so we can help you grow in your faith. God bless you. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Listen, we are up to one of the most integral portions of our worship experience, that being the worship and giving. Now listen, I say we are up to the worship and giving because many times people say we are down to the offering or we are down to the ministry of giving, when actually the worship and giving is an exciting time, it's an uplifting time because it's your opportunity to sow and to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Now stay tuned for your opportunities and your ways to give.